Hello everyone Hello. and thank you for joining us on this evening's stream. Uh, so this is um, one of our five part series this evening. So every week we have a new episode and tonight's episode is personal statements. Uh, so hopefully you will uh, join us this evening and ask some questions if you have any. Um, you can pop into the comments if you want to say hello, if you want to uh, um, ask us a question in there, please feel free to do so. Um, you'll be glad to know it's not just myself um, this evening, it's also my colleagues joining us. So I'm Faye, always forget to mention who I am, but it, thankfully it does remind us on the screen who we are. Uh, we have Ben, we have Dal, and we have Henrik as well. So everybody just waves and turns. Feels like a, a bit of a game show. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so what we're going to go through this evening? So we're going to go through um, personal statements, as it's called um, on the on the uh, intro. Um, what it is, um, what makes a good personal statement as well. Um, what um, are we looking for? What's good? Uh, what's some of the bad things that we see? So some of the things to avoid as well. So some hints and tips for you there as well. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to get started as well, so we'll have some pointers to get you kind of start um, to start with it as well. Um, other things that we might probably discuss over as well are things like work experience and how you can get around that, obviously with the current situation with COVID as well, and how really to start making a plan. So how to start getting a pen to paper, how to start form formulating those sentences, um, getting your ideas down on paper. Uh, so if you um, do want to watch it back or if you've missed any of the other parts of tonight's series, I think we're on episode four now, um, you can watch them back on the DMU website as well. Um, so have we got any comments? We do. Hello. We've got a few people saying hello. That's great. Do, do give us a wave. If you are watching on our website, um, if you do want to take part, you just need to hover over the video, um, click YouTube, and that's where you can start making comments. So let's make a start, shall we? Ben, can you start us off with what is the parcel statement and give us a little bit of an explainer? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So um, with your application, obviously the application that you make through UCAS, so if you caught a UCAS episode uh, a couple of weeks ago, you'll probably know a little bit more about how that actual process works. Obviously, that comes with filling in quite a lot of information about you as an individual. So obviously, name, address, you'll probably need to put in things like employment and, and education history and that sort of thing. Uh, we'll get a series of predicted grades from you. But what all that kind of application process doesn't do is tell us about you as a person. So the personal statement is a chance for you to actually um, give us that part. It gives you a chance to actually give us that information to sort of find out more about you find out more about what you're about, find out why you want us to do that particular course. Um, obviously, it will give the, the admissions tutors more of an idea about what kind of experience you've got and that sort of thing. So it's very, very important that we look at that personal statement so that we've got a really good reflection on the individual. Obviously, it's important that you make sure that you get the right grades for these courses. But equally, we need to make sure that we feel you're going to be a right fit for this particular course. So, you know, from your background, from the things you've been doing, from that work experience, all of those things are going to tie into that personal statement so that we can go, yes, we think this person is going to be a really good fit for this particular course. So the personal statement is then used, obviously, to decide whether that university is going to make you that offer. Um, obviously, for really, really competitive courses, that can be really tricky because, again, obviously, they're going to look down at a lot of students that maybe do meet the grade criteria. But unfortunately, we're going to look down at the personal statement again to see the kind of experience and work experience you've got. So, again, it becomes very important that that personal statement is really up to snuff so that we can kind of, again, make that decision on those offers. Uh, one of the big things that we're going to sort of cover in, in this session today is talking about what makes a good personal statement. So talking more about things like the structure, which we're going to come on to in, in a couple of minutes. Um, but one of the things that you do need to be very aware of is the character limit. So the number of characters that you can have on your personal statement is 4,000 characters or 47 lines. So when you copy and paste that into the UCAS website, anything over that, unfortunately, will be cut off. So the first thing that you need to be aware of when you are starting to go through your drafts is trying to get it under that character limit, trying to condense everything down. It might be that you've got lots 
lots and lots that you need to talk about. So then you need to start thinking about what's going to be the most relevant skills and experience for you to be able to put into that application that is going to be a really good representation of you as an individual and why you have chosen that course. The last thing I'll mention before we move on to the next bit is the personal statement that you apply for, the UCAS application that you create, goes to your five UCAS choices. So it might be that you've chosen to pick five different universities, uh, hopefully similar courses, but it is just the one personal statement that you write that does go to all five of the institutions. Great, thank you very much for that. And that was very, very um, detailed. So we all kind of have a good start of what a personal statement is. We've got a lot of people saying hello. Um, Toby, I feel like we're hello. famous. <laughs> I go. think that was Wigston College, that one was. So shout out to Wigston College for anyone um, joining us this evening. Great to have you yeah. with us. Um, moving on to kind of what makes a good personal statement. Dal, can you can you fill us in a little bit? What, what do you think kind of stands out to you? Yeah, sure. So for me personally, um, one of the personal the things that I used to look for when I because I, in my previous job I used to used to mark personal statements and I do have a bit of experience in doing that. Um, one of the first things that I would look for would be a desire to sub, uh, study the subject in the course area. So when you're opening your personal statement, sometimes it can come across to be the hardest line that you'll write. A lot of students often stumble or they often get stuck with their opening paragraph because they spend a lot of time deliberate on it right what is it that i need to put how am i going to capture the reader's attention i don't want to use anything too cliche so one thing that i always recommend to students is try and approach it in a different way so try and be a bit more creative there are a lot of students who will use your generic for as long as i can remember i've wanted to be an aeronautical engineer one of the questions that we used to have when we used to read statements like that is at what age did you realize what an aeronautical engineer was and how we then created a line saying from a young age i've always wanted to do it so when we start to read stuff it doesn't then actually make sense so one thing that i would always say when you're opening your personal statement please try and approach it in a way where you get to demonstrate your knowledge and passion for the course to try and be a bit more creative so when you're writing that statement, it really stands out because I can tell you from experience, a lot of students do write the same sort of intros. And from a from a marking perspective, it sometimes can can come across as a bit safe, shall we say. So really do try to be creative. And the biggest tip or tip I could give you in terms of being able to write that first section is approach it in a way where you are demonstrating your passion, you are demonstrating your knowledge for that course area. And what you need to do from there is go straight to the point. Another common mistake that students can often make when writing this is sometimes they get a bit too personal. Sometimes they go into story writing mode. Um, as Ben said, you only have 47 lines within this document. So you don't have a lot of lines to be able to tell me all the different things that have gone in your life that has led you to the point of wanting to study in that course or in that area. So it's very, very important that you are very relevant and it's very important that you go straight to the point. When we're reading your personal statement, we wanna see evidence of course research. So this could be tricky if you are applying to two courses that doesn't necessarily sit within the same field. So say for example, law and midwifery. It would be very challenging for you to write a personal statement that addresses both course areas in enough detail that it makes sense and that it, it fits to both. So when you're making your course choices, please ensure that they fit and they sit within the same field. And please ensure that you've done course research and you're able to, if you're really savvy, you're able to use your current education and make those links between how it's gonna help prepare you to study at university. So that's how you would use the, whether you're doing A-levels or whether you're doing BTECs at the moment, that's how you'd be able to join the two together in regards to, right, this is what I'm studying now and it will help prepare me when studying subject or course A or B, whatever it may be at university. Can you draw those modules together? Can you draw those units together? The next thing that we'd like to see is, do you guys understand how this course will advance your career prospects? So we're not looking for a job destination for you to, to be able to disclose in your personal statement, but just more being conscious or being aware of the fact that this university course will upskill you and it will also develop your knowledge within that field. Now, the key word that I use there was upskill. So 
a lot of students will write the sentence or comment around the fact that they're coming to university to gain new skills. And I would actually argue the opposite. I would say you, you guys already have the skills that you need to be successful within your field, but yet you're coming to university to upskill yourself. And that's very, very important when you're writing your personal statement. So please ensure you understand what your key skills are and how they relate to the field or how they relate to you being successful at university. That is probably the the crux of the whole thing in my opinion of course I'll, I'll chuck it out to the guys in a second on how to write a good personal statement great and I think we've just got um a question that's popped up as well so obviously students are thinking about what they enjoy what they can show enthusiasm in and I think that's always really hard is finding out what you're definitely going to apply to if you kind of struggling between two or three subjects. But thinking about other things that you can do as well, we have got a question here about um, Duke of Edinburgh, that one is. Um, so having that Duke of Edinburgh, whether that's bronze or silver, what kind of role could that play um, in the personal statement and the application to university? Henrik? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll pick so, someone. Uh, similar to what Dow just mentioned before, you're going to be looking at a lot of the um, the competencies and the skills that you've got from doing that Duke of Edinburgh. So obviously, depending on what you've done, I've never done Duke of Edinburgh personally, so I'm not actually 100% sure what it entails. But what you'll be looking for is the kind of things that you've gained from that, what kind of skills you've, you've achieved. Um, so whether it's things like communication skills, team working, maybe some leadership, that kind of thing. And if you can then bring that background, so take it full circle to the course that you are looking to apply for. So, you know, if you're looking to apply for a business management degree and you've done and a leadership role, you'll be able to link them in there. You'll be able to find, um, you know, the bits that are comparable and you'll be able to talk about those in your statement. And then same again, if you've got things like uh, if you, you ever have an interview or an audition or that sort of stuff. And again, a lot of these the skills that you, you've acquired um, through various extracurricular activities and stuff you've done outside of your school and college. Nope. you'll be able to um, discuss mm -hmm. any statement there as well, so. Like we bow. me. <laughs> I don't often say if it was me. I got a little <laughs> giggle and I thought, hmm, who was that? Yeah. Somebody, needs to, somebody needs to turn the phone off in class. <laughs> <laughs> I think Definitely going along with that, <laughs> I think well, going along with that as well, um, with something like the, the the Duke of Edinburgh, obviously you do get a lot of skills in, in volunteer work. Uh, there's various things you'll do with things like charities and stuff. And if you are going down the route of obviously mentioning other skills that you've developed, Duke of Edinburgh provides you with that opportunity from, you know, going on. It isn't just about kind of going away for a long weekend camping. There's a lot of skills that you kind of develop from the wider activities that you sort of get involved in. So definitely, uh, Toby, in regards to your question, is definitely include that in your application with regards to skills such as, you know, communication, leadership, organisation, all of those things might factor into some of the stuff that you've done. And obviously your experience will be very unique in that regard. Um, so try to tie in some of those transferable skills that we mentioned and sort of tie those into your application because they're all going to be relevant to, at that point. I think this year more than ever. I mean, if you look at a lot of students this year, will probably be in a situation where they haven't had the opportunity or the chance to do their work experience that they normally would have conducted over the summer due mm -hmm. to COVID. So for, the, for those of you that are watching, if you have done any extracurriculum activities, now more than ever is your opportunity to show how you've developed similar skills that you would have developed during employability. So Toby, if you don't have any employability experience, please do look towards those extracurricular activities to sort of compensate for that and to sort of make up for the fact that if there are any students that are watching that didn't get the opportunity to do any work experience in the, uh, in the summer or they're mm -hmm. struggling to find anything now prior to writing their personal statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And again, that kind of work experience thing that you mentioned, I mean, that's going to be super important. Obviously, university is going to be a little bit more lenient over the next sort of, uh, well, we're going to say 12 months. So however long this carries on, obviously, with you you guys making your applications over the next few months, it is going to be more difficult for you to get that that sort of work experience. So like Dow just said, pull on other 
experience, pull on other things that you've done. There's a lot of opportunities for you to be able to do certain things online now. You know, there's certain skills that you can learn using a lot of web resources. You know, if you wanted to go into stuff that's maybe relevant to, I'm trying to think of an example here, but you know, like making podcasts and videos and that sort of things, they might tie into other skills that you can learn. So while experience is a bit trickier at the minute, definitely use some of this extra time that you might have stuck indoors to your advantage. I think one thing as well that we often find, or I often find myself when I speak to students, particularly when I go into to sixth forms and colleges, is that some students think that maybe they don't have many skills or they don't have anything to talk about, but you can draw a lot of skills from you know your, your even going into sixth form, going to your classes, from hitting deadlines, performing well under pressure. You know you've got your writing skills, you've got your communication skills, your kind of timekeeping, time management as well. So um, Zakia, I know you've mentioned there if you don't you know if you don't have many skills, I promise you you know there is definitely things that you can draw from your studies currently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you do something like history, maybe you're having to to analyze, for example, if you do something like law at sixth form, then you're having to be quite um, constructive. You have to be, again, analytical. You have to be able to put forward an argument, argument have confidence. So there's lots of different things that you can get from actually your studies as well as extracurricular things. So whatever you do, don't sell yourself short and have a chat with your um, personal tutor as well because um, they can they can help you with kind of pinpointing what your skills are. Just sorry for just before you carry on there with that you mentioned there the to be analytical sometimes when I've gone in and spoke to students sometimes I've asked that question to students actually right how many of you believe you have a an analytical nature or have the ability to analyze and sometimes a lot of students don't believe that they have the capability to do so so recently one of the examples that I've been using is I've been asking students right what do you guys think of Boris Johnson's lockdown rules <laughs> and a lot of students obviously have an opinion on that. Some students might think they're absolutely fantastic. Some people might be in a position and think, you know what, it doesn't actually quite make sense. But if you look at what you're doing in terms of having this conversation with me or having that conversation with anyone, you're actually analysing. You're taking an issue. You're taking a problem. You're looking mm -hmm. at the good things within that problem. You're looking at how we can improve that problem. And we're also justifying as to why it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, we often do that without thinking. So. Zakia, as Faye just mentioned, in terms of you don't really think you have that many skills, but sometimes you, you just have to look at the everyday things that you do that you might necessarily think that is just normal, that it's just natural, but actually you are using quite a few skills on a day-to-day -day basis and you're often overlooking them. So for some people that work within retail, like for me, for example, I know for a fact when I worked at Carphone Warehouse when I was, before when I was applying to university, I probably would have just overlooked car from where I and thought, yeah, you know what? It's just a normal sales job. It's just something I do on the weekends. But actually, everything that I do today, I learned from car from where mm -hmm. So it might seem minute at the moment, but have a look and really just break down one example within your work experience. I don't know if you're currently working at the moment. Just take one example or take one instance within your working day and really have a look at the skills that you've used there. And if you can't find the skills, have a look at the qualities in terms of your character, because you'll be quite surprised at what you actually do without actually realising it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so definitely, I think as well, just have a chat with people. I mentioned, obviously, chat with your personal tutor, but chat with your family, chat with your friends, find out, you know, what you're good at. Um, you know, you, you might not realise, I mean, the fact that even people are posting questions as well. You know, that's showing, you know, that you are, you know, that you're here, that you are motivated, you are enthusiastic about doing well in your application and in your personal statements as well. So that's yeah. um, a really good place that you're starting here uh, before starting, to, you know, your efforts with your personal statement. Um, yeah. I'll just pop over to this question as well that we have here. I just want to make sure I don't miss this one as well. Um, how do you cast points add up? Um, so with that, um, UCAS points, kind of, if you do A-levels or B-techs 
or whatever it might be, level three qualification, um, you can usually get UCAS points from them if you add them up. So some universities might not say, right, we want you to have um, BBC, for example. Um, they might say we want you to have 112 UCAS points. Um, and so it could be that you can add in if you get any points from doing an AS or get points from, for example, doing a EPQ, extended project qualification, I forgot my letters then, um, then sometimes you can get points for that depending on the course and the university. So um, have a look on the UCAS um, website. If you pop UCAS tariff calculator um, onto, oh, that was very timely, <laughs> onto, um, onto Google, and that's the link below there, um, then you can add up your points on what perhaps you think you'll get on, in your grades and what qualification you're doing. So that keeps it nice, nice and easy for you. Um, I think probably we can move on to how to actually start planning the personal statements. Um, so how we actually go about kind of doing a bit of a a mind map, I think. Um, Dal, did you want to, to start us off with this one? Um, I can do, yeah. So, I think in terms of. might have an infographic as well. In terms of planning, guys, some people might find it easier to, to do a mind map in terms of, right, you want to write everything down. And as your ideas come to you, you'll just add on extra branches um, onto your main mind map. So if you have a look at what we've got here, so we've got the personal statement in the middle. And as I was saying earlier, one of the first things that you need to do is be able to explain your choice, of course. And really, the key word that I really want to stress to you guys is make sure you're showing that you are knowledgeable of that course area. Make sure you're showing that you understand the course area that you're going to. Um, there's a lot of questions in the chat, which I'm sure we'll get onto in a second, that goes regards to structure. And, and I feel like sometimes the structure does come in in regards to planning. When you're planning with the mind map, it's probably easier to get all of your ideas on the paper first and then have a look at how we group and collate those and how those how those transfer onto the actual paper. So the next thing that you want to do is describe your suitability. And the best way that I can think of doing that is, and the advice that I always give to students is make a list of all the skills and qualities that you guys have. So this list, it doesn't have to be a massive list. If it's short, really have a think about some of the skills and qualities you've got. And then from there, realistically, you're going to sign them to three places, aren't you? You're going to sign it to your education. So you develop this skill within your A levels or your BTECs or your GCSEs, or it could be from your employability. So that would be the second section. And the final section would be from a social setting. So i.e. hobbies or interest. So once you've worked out what your skills are, once you've worked out, right, where did I actually develop that skill or that quality? All you need to do then is provide an example, Devote, right, a very brief example. And then the last part to that point would be the relevancy. Why is it important to that field? Why is it important to that course area? So you can do that when you're thinking about that point in terms of describing your suitability. For those of you that have work experience, great. As I just mentioned, you would tie that in there. If you don't, as I was saying earlier, please do have a look at the extracurricular activities you guys have done and really think about the skills and qualities that you guys have developed. So if you can't think of any skills, think about the quality. So your quality to be empathetic, your quality to be sympathetic, care for others. So all of those are great qualities that you can sort of show from your social experience. And then finally, you would conclude with your aspirations and your future plans. Now, a lot of students might say that, right, I want to do this course because I want to become X and put in a job or a profession in there. But there is absolutely no pressure from you from a student perspective to be able to to identify a career path. Part and parcel of you guys coming to universities to explore that. So hopefully when you're finishing your personal statement, something that I'd push you towards doing is commenting around how you're looking forward to taking on board these different opportunities. Because part and parcel of you guys coming to universities, taking on board those opportunities and to try and work out where your employability lies. That's why on a lot of the courses that you guys will be hopefully be applying for, will have an employability element to there. It, that's our way of showing you guys, right, these are the things that you guys could potentially do with your degree. Now, structure, there is many ways that you could potentially structure your personal statement, especially in regards to your planning. So once you've got all of that down on a piece of paper, 
there's two common well there's one common way that most students do they'll start off with a with an introduction and that would usually explain why they're interested in the course the next section will usually be around their education the third section might be around their employability the final section might be around their hobbies and interests now that's completely fine you can follow that way if you want to or the other way that you could potentially do it is essentially you're going to write three blocks of text you're going to write a block of text around your education you're going to write a block of text around your employability and you're also going to write a block of text around your social experience so i.e your hobbies and interests whatever order that comes i don't believe it's that important i believe it's all about making sure that the content sits together and that it reads simply so the last thing that you want to do is start the top of your personal statement around education and then at the bottom you go back to referring to your education so make sure you put everything together because as a reader we'll be jumping around so we'll have to read the top to work out the bottom and vice versa so as long as those your ideas and your skills and your qualities and your examples all sit together me personally i don't know what the rest of the guys think i don't believe there is a right or wrong way of approaching as long as it reads simply so what do you guys think yeah, I agree. I think that that there's quite a lot there. And again, using a structure can help quite a lot of students, which is why there is a, as, as Dow just said, there is a, obviously quite a lot of resources and bits online that you'll read. And obviously our mind map that will kind of talk about, right, talk about this, talk about this, talk about this. But it's called a personal statement. It has to be very much personal to you. And if we're going to read that or, you know, somebody like Dow or somebody at admissions is going to read that and go, yeah, this this feels quite sort of regimented it feels like you've maybe used an online template sometimes that can kind of take the wind out your sails a little bit it's really got to be a, a, a good reflection of you as an individual so try and make sure that that comes across as well as that kind of passion for why you want to do that subject and it, you know that's easy enough to do in some capacities but also really difficult when it comes to actually why is it you chosen that particular subject you know is it just because you purely had this interest for many years is it because you know you want uh, a particular career path and it's okay if you don't know what career path you want to do because as we've demonstrated from previous live streams we've all done slightly different degrees and we've all ended up in a very similar job so ultimately it's just making sure that the university finds the best person for that course and that's where again this personal statement is really going to shine so you know use the structure use that mind map to some degree in terms of helping you think about what sort of things you do want to talk about but definitely try and get that kind of personality to shine through i think i just say one thing um i don't know if you agree with this dial when you were looking at personal statements in your old role but um I think one piece of advice I'd say is in that introduction, you probably want to mention the course that you're applying for um, because, you know, I read a personal statement that I was looking over uh, last week or the week before, and the student was clearly interested in art or design and never in that statement did they actually mention what course they're applying for, but they were talking about they enjoy design, they enjoy art, they enjoy going to museums, but they enjoy making stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, you know, I had to ask the student, you know, what is the course you've actually applied for? And I think, you know, you sh the admissions tutor shouldn't have to sort of second guess that you know it should be in there you should have a clear okay this student definitely wants to apply for fine art okay cool so we know they meet the criteria for the sort of student that we're looking for rather than guessing is it art is it design is it textiles you know that sort of thing um mm. don't you agree with that as a yes as, as a general rule of thumb but the only other consideration there could be if they have applied for art and design yeah. So then obviously they can't be too specific to that course. But yeah, I agree with what Henrik's saying. Make sure you mention the course area in terms of where and what it is that you guys want to study. But there is no, in regards to structure, as Ben was just saying, there is no right or wrong way of doing it. And sometimes if you are following that set structure, I don't believe, and I'm sure my, my colleagues will agree with me, there are no two students that are the same. But yet when mm -hmm. we've read these personal statements, they all do come out carbon copies of each other to try and bring something different. And sometimes the way that you can be different in, in terms of your writing is just structure it in a completely different way because it mm -hmm. won't read as the norm of how everyone else has done it. And you won't get marked down for doing that as long as you do follow the things that we've mentioned already. I think the structure is just there to make sure that you don't forget anything. Yeah. You don't actually have to, as Dal said, follow it to a T. It's just to make sure that you are mentioning all of the things that are important, 
And like Henrik said, making sure that we know that you what you want to apply to. Yes, you'll have it also separately on the application form, but then if you're not talking about that specific subject in detail on your personal statement, it might show a lack of interest or enthusiasm, or like you perhaps don't know what's involved in the course. Um, like Henrik, I've read personal statements where I think students have tried to keep their personal statement a little bit open to apply for other courses in addition to very competitive courses. And that's where it gets like to the point where you're not sure if the student knows what they want to do. Um, so I think it's very important to be clear, to be concise, and to make that enthusiasm really, really shine through. And I think yeah. I'm not sure about, obviously, not everybody's in the same field as myself, whereas I didn't actually know when it came to writing my personal statement, mm. my tutor was there, come on, they put pen to paper, you know, we're all in, in the tutor group together. And I was sat there like, I don't know what I'm actually applying to. But if you're in that position where you still want to go to virtual open days or whatever it is that you, you still need to do a bit more research, you can start putting down your skills. And if you have a few subjects in mind, you can start kind of thinking, OK, well, can I speak about this? What do I know about the course at university level? Um, you know, because I think it becomes easier to write about something that you really enjoy and that you are passionate about. So I think you'll realize that even by writing, putting something down and writing about a course might actually help you pick what you want to do. And that was definitely the case with me. At one point I was doing psychology and then I was doing something art and design related and then I was doing languages. So I kept flitting, but actually sitting down, making a plan, starting to write something was actually really helpful. And I think my personal tutor was so nice. I just had to get pen to paper because I didn't want to disappoint. <laughs> what yeah. about everybody else? Did you did you leave it to last minute? How many drafts did you write? Lots of last minute drafts for me, I think it was. Yeah, me too. I think the better ones are the ones that are redrafted and drafted and drafted again, aren't they, really? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you might look at it and think, you know, this is a, it's an absolute work of art, but then sometimes you leave it for a week, you come back to it and think, oh, actually, it's not, it's not that great. So don't be disheartened if you do have to keep writing it. Sometimes the better ones are the ones that have had multiple drafts. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, again, I find I actually find it really hard to read my own writing. I find that mm. I just miss spelling errors and all sorts. Like I've sent an email to you guys to, to proofread, and you've gone, "Yeah, that's wrong. That that sentence doesn't make sense." But I can't see it. So, proofreading, redrafting, there's no harm in it. You know, give yourself that time to just kind of go through it. Make sure um, you read it out loud. That's, that's why. A good idea. If you read if you read it in your mind, that's where you don't pick up the the errors. If you read it out loud. Yeah. Because if when you're reading it out loud, you're going to read it as if somebody else is reading it. Yeah. So please do remember that. I think that's a common... When I'm writing something important, I always make sure I read it out loud anyway, guys. So <laughs> if you guys ever receive anything long-winded from me, just know I've read it out loud first, <laughs> just to make sure it's made sense. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just good to realise that you haven't made a sentence that's like six, seven lines long. And when you read it out loud, you pick up on that because you run out of breath. You start turning slightly blue. So, uh, <laughs> I think it's good to, as Dal said, read it out loud. So you're making sure you're putting all the grammar that's needed in each in each paragraph in each sentence, and you're not running out of breath. Um, Henrik, can you go on to maybe some do's for your personal statement? What kind of things should we be doing um, as part of it? Of course, and as we all just mentioned. First thing first, probably just be prepared to spend a little bit of time on it and rewrite it several times. So I think, you know, I can't imagine there'd be many people out there that have written one personal statement, they've done one draft and it's been sent off. You know, I can imagine most people take at least five, six, maybe upwards of 10 different drafts. Um, so do be prepared to spend a bit of time on it and just, you know, allocate that time as well. So unlike myself, I remember I rushed you know, pretty badly to get it done. Uh, looking late, I got a place at university, so it couldn't have been too bad. But, you know, don't rush it, spend enough time on it um, and allocate that time because the closer you get to that deadline of sort of January, um, you know, and chances are you'll have an internal deadline in your college or your school, which will probably be before the Christmas break anyway. So that might be around December time. You might be starting to work on coursework. You might be doing open days. You've got a lot going on. Um, and you don't want to put your personal statement on the back burner because it is going to be, 
you know, arguably as important as your predicted grades when it comes to applying to uni. So spend that time and everything you talk about, whether it's your course, your experience, the skills that you have, always follow the ABC method. So, you know, what activity you've done, um, what the benefit was and what the outcome was and how that links back to your course. Um, so just to give you sort of a quick example, you know, um, you know, maybe you volunteered, um, you know, doing anything, but just talk about the sort of skills you've gained from that and how they're going to link back to the course. So maybe you are, you know, you, you volunteered in a charity shop um, and you want to apply for something like midwifery or nursing. You know, you can talk about how you've been empathetic, you've shown, been compassionate, that sort of thing. Um, and that once again, that will link back to the course and it will make the admissions tutors know that the student that's applying for this um, has the sort of qualities and the competencies that they're looking for um you know for, for a nurse beyond when they graduate and that sort of thing mm. don't be afraid to ask for feedback um obviously it is a personal statement as ben said so it's personal for you so if someone gives you feedback you're not happy with it you know if you're happy with what you've written you don't have to change it it is your personal statement it is about you and it's about your life but do ask for feedback try take that feedback on board you've got your tutors there you've got your family there your friends uh you know those sort of people know you pretty well um and they'll be honest with you um Another useful tool for everything university related, not just obviously your personal statements, is the UCAS website um, and all the course pages as well. So, you know, when you come to look at sort of the courses you're looking at, um, say if you go on the DMU website, you look at business management, it will tell you the sort of stuff they're looking for. And there's no reason why you can't talk about that in your course, you know, in your um, in your statement, sorry, uh, if you've sort of got any experience in that sort of thing. Same again, it shows your suitability and it's going to, um, you know, increase your likelihood of getting put in that yes pile. Um, look to make a plan. Um, so whether that's a mind map or, you know, post-it notes. I know I remember people talk about putting post-it notes all around their, their room and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, when it springs to mind, they write on it. Whatever suits you, but just make sure you plan. That sort of ties in with the whole, um, you know, the timing of things again. Um, and, yeah, just obviously make sure you've planned it uh, and you've drafted it several times. You've done your spell check-in. Um, checked for your grammar, that sort of thing, because these will be picked up. Um, keep your statement relevant to the course you're applying for. So as Dale mentioned at the beginning, you know, it is a personal statement, but don't go off on a massive tangent talking about things that aren't relevant to that course or that aren't relevant to uh, the career that you're looking to go into. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, you, the statements are going to be read um, you know, hundreds of times, maybe a thousand times by the admissions tutors, and you're going to look to be engaging. Um, essentially so just keep it relevant straight to the point make it exciting stick to language that you're comfortable with and ultimately just be positive you know university is a really exciting experience getting a job at the end of it's really exciting and obviously you want that positivity to come through within your statement I have I don't know about everybody else but I have read personal statements sometimes where they've had very very big words in it very <laughs> big words and I like to think I know a lot of words um but sometimes i'm thinking this was definitely a you know look for other words hit the thesaurus button what sounds <laughs> really really smart and i've thought doesn't sound quite right in that sentence perhaps put something down that isn't isn't obviously colloquial that isn't slang or anything but but i think keep it formal so we don't get some there uh, some very interesting words and sentences, I think, probably. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Lang language is really important because, again, it just shows what kind of you can you can kind of gain quite a lot from a, the sort of person that you are and the sort of way that you approach certain situations. So, yeah, don't, don't you don't need to use all the big words. This is advice for, you know, job applications as well is is you can be very grounded. Use words that you're comfortable with because it just reflects you as an individual. And if you're more comfortable with using that sort of language and it comes across in your writing, then great. But you don't feel don't feel the need to, again, like that face says, you know, dig out the thesaurus and start changing words up just to make it sound fancy. That's not what it's there for. Do you want me to jump into some don'ts? Go for it. Give us so, bring us some don'ts. <laughs> we'll do some more don'ts and then if anybody's got any other questions, obviously feel free to pop those in the comments. But um just to kind of tie into what Henry's just talked about, um, and we have mentioned this already a couple of times, is don't copy from anywhere you know, don't copy from somebody else's and don't copy from like examples online. There are some out there. 
Um, it, they're very easy to find on Google, but just avoid using them outside of looking at them, looking at them as examples. But even then, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because you might be too tempted to sort of pull bits from it that you've read. So try and go into this, even if it's just your first draft, try and go into this just entirely your own work. You know, give it yourself the best shot that you can in your first application and just see how you get on because you might be really surprised once you've started to think about the sort of things that you've got, you'll be surprised about the amount of stuff that you can write about and the amount of skills that you can start to develop. So try not to copy any uh, from anywhere and avoid using, again, some of those online templates if you can. Um, you don't always need to state your qualifications in the application. Sometimes they might tie more relevantly into the sort of conversation that you're having or into the paragraph that you're, you're, you're sort of talking about. But you don't need to sit there and say, well, I've got an A in this and a B in that and a C in that and an A in that because you're wasting characters for what is going to be more sort of relevant skills that you need to identify. And equally, we'll know what qualifications you've got at GCSE or A level from, again, things like your predicted grades. So you don't necessarily need to talk about that uh, too much in the application. Don't um don't make any sort of uh big sort of uh i'm trying to think of the words i was trying to put here but don't lie about anything on your application don't sort of over exaggerate that's what i was looking for because very often again those sort of things can be caught out particularly again if those courses are looking for uh to bring you in for an interview after you've submitted your application because they may use that personal statement as a basis uh when asking you questions from that personal statement. So don't lie, don't ever exaggerate, just talk about the sort of skills that you've got. You know, again, it needs to be a really good reflection of you as an individual. Uh, so avoid anything like that. Um, avoid any sort of jokes. Obviously we've talked about using sort of semi-formal language. Keep it as professional as you can. Avoid any sort of cliches, because Dal just hates them. Don't put a cliche in there, because Dal, Dal will have you, you're right? Don't stick them in there. Um, he doesn't like them. Something else that Dal said in a previous uh, personal statement live stream is, is don't put any quotes in there what are your thoughts on quotes dal uh it depends what the <laughs> quote is you know you, you often see the what is it live love life whatever it is or whatever these an oscar kids... wilde quote pardon yeah an oscar wilde quote or yeah like so it, you know sometimes students might be tempted to put a quote in because they they might think it it sounds good or it will read good but for me yeah. just as a again general rule of thumb i'd probably advise you not to um mm -hmm. Whilst we're on the topic of quotes and ties me into textbooks, sorry, Ben, just very briefly. Oh, no, go for it. If you've read textbooks or journals within your field that you're studying, please go beyond then telling me the name or the book or the author that you read. Because for me, that is not as important. What's important is the takeaway. So a lot of students do write, yes, I read text A by so and so, so and so, and so and so, but then they stop there. So. Mm. For me to believe you've taken anything from that, you need to tell me what you got and how it's helped or it's how it's going to aid you when you transition over into university. But yeah, quotations, if we can avoid them, please mm -hmm. do. If you're going to use a quotation, use an academic one and make sure it's it's teeing you up to make a point in your personal statement. So if you're trying to explain something, i.e. something that you've understood or something that you've learned and you want to show that for a quotation, then yeah, by all means do so. But please make yeah. sure you, we consider the source, i.e. where it's come from. Is it academic? But it's probably a lot easier just to just to avoid that altogether. I think I think the problem is, is that people tend to use the exact same one. Mm. So the exact same <laughs> maths quote, the exact same English literature quote, because everybody's doing the same well, similar curriculum. Um, yeah. So they might find, you know, somebody who's doing maths might quote something from Albert Einstein or your know, physics or something, you know, something yeah. like pure maths is the poetry of logic or something. So it's something that Did you is make probably that a little bit cringy and <laughs> will be used by a lot of people. So yeah. again, it's not your words, it's a personal statement. What does that mean by putting that in there to yeah. you? So if it has a strong meaning to you, go for it. But yeah. just be be air on perhaps even just pop the quote into google and see because you can actually see how many times that's been used in the past on a personal mm -hmm. statement so if it doesn't flag then you might be okay yeah air um, on the side Faye, of caution Faye, was that a real quote or did you make that up Is that no your... i just looked it up on the student room oh. and that was uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple on there there was i think um Emily Bronte, there was um, Napoleon, uh, oh, there's a couple okay. of other ones on there. <laughs> Apparently art, a picture is a, a worth a thousand words. Yeah, um, I've heard that one before. 
there's a couple on there so uh, <laughs> have yeah. a look online it's quite it's quite fun looking yeah. at some of the, the phrases no thank you for that i think again quotes is uh is another one that i've seen quite a lot of and i'm I'm very on the fence about it which is why i wanted to get dal's opinion on that and i think again i think very diplomatic response there dal really really good so yeah thank you for that um really that was kind of most of my don'ts the last one that we've already kind of touched upon is is how specific you make your application to either one institution or one course obviously you need to make it so that it's tailored to what you want to study and where you want to go but equally because you're sending that one application to all five of your choices that could be five different universities so if you put at the top of your application, I really want to go to DMU because, but you've also applied for Lincoln and Dundee or wherever else, that's not going to look too great to those other institutions. So avoid putting the actual institution in there, but still you need to make sure you're making it very specific to the courses themselves. And this is where, as I think Henry mentioned earlier, looking at the course pages is going to really benefit you here because you'll be able to see the modules for each of the courses you've applied to. There will be overlap. There are a lot of courses that have certain criteria, things they must cover, regardless of what institution you go to but it's about those more nuances that come with that particular university course that might be worth just kind of either looking out for highlighting or sometimes even avoiding altogether again if you are looking to make the most of the offers that you've got so again don't highlight anything sort of dmu specific if again you've made those applications to other universities as well sounds like a very tricky balance that you've got to lie with there but again it's all about making sure that you are ticking all of those boxes to make the most of the offers that you're making um with that, and I don't know if anybody's got any other points on that, things like the NHS courses as one example, if you are applying for an NHS course, look at the values that come from actually working within that kind of industry. So if you're going within the NHS, they've got certain values that they require from their employees, from their nurses, from their doctors. So you can highlight those in the application because that's very forward thinking. You're not only looking to apply for the course, but you've made it very, very clear that you know exactly where that's going to take you, working with the NHS, becoming a nurse, and you know what's important for that sort of course i.e patient care etc so think about those sorts of things as well allow you to kind of again flesh that part of it out great so i think we're just going to go over um a couple of questions that have come through then and just make sure you know if you do have one now is the time if you haven't asked it pop it into the comments and we'll answer that for you um i think this is one that is a really it's a great question um mature students and I think sometimes mature students just need to go a bit higher. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes are themselves short because you've got so much life experience. I'm going to take this off the screen. Um, you have a lot of life experience, and you know you can really bring that into a personal statement, and even just really shine through. I think to on on an application. Has anybody else got any advice that they might want to put forward on that one? I think your biggest advantage is that the work experience that you'll have over those that are coming straight out of sixth form in college. So mature students naturally would have probably chose employability over education at the time where mm -hmm. where students do transition over. And I feel like one of the biggest advantages that you guys have got to use, especially now this year more than ever, is the fact that you have, if you do have, an extensive employment history and what you've taken from that. So I think the other part of the question was about mentioning your grades and what your grades were. I can't really remember if it was Ben or Faye who mentioned that the grades aren't that important to mention in the personal statement. Those will go on your application form. So I wouldn't have to worry too much about that. So when you're talking in regards to your um, your education in terms of the, um, the personal statement, what you want to be focusing on there is the knowledge that you've learned and how that's going to support you whenever studying whatever it is that you want to go into study at university. But yeah, make sure you really play to your strength, which is hopefully either the life experience, as Faye was uh, talking about, or that employment experience as well. Mm -hmm. And we have another one. How can you start off your personal statement? I would actually say don't, when you are playing it, don't start with yeah. the beginning don't mm. come back to that later because if it's going to stop you from starting your personal statement you don't need to you can do that later mm -hmm. but do we have any examples that we can think of at the top of our head for how to start off a personal statement what i'd say is uh, we've all been there where you know you, you've struggled to put pen to paper or get words on the page 
Mm-hmm. For me, I remember actually writing my personal statement. I didn't like the introduction is probably the most daunting bit because that's where you've got to start. You have no idea. I mean, what yeah. I tend to advise students to do is if they are struggling with the introduction, and this is what I did when I was writing my statement, I did the main body first and then I did the introduction last because then I sort of knew what I was talking about um, and it just made sense to me at the time. So I think if you're struggling to actually get words on paper, maybe just look to start on the main body, start talking about your skills, your experiences, even your extracurricular stuff. You know, you can even do the outro and then come back to your introduction. Um, I think that might be useful because if not, you could be, you know, really stressing over just starting and yeah. I think if I was to rewrite mine again now with everything that I've learned, I'd probably start with my understanding of the field and I'd probably write yeah. a very, very simple sentence and, and I'd go as simple as right sports sociology is the study of and I'd finish that sentence and I'll just give you what I believe that that field is about because what that is showing straight away go back to what I said earlier on in this in this um, this episode I says that you want to really demonstrate the knowledge that you have for your course area and if you can provide your own definition or your own understanding of what you're going to study naturally the next line should tell me where you got that knowledge from so if you've come out with right this is the study of naturally the next line you should write should be right i've got this information i.e from my education or i got it from my social experience or i got it from my work experience and it's a great transition for you to go straight in and start talking about those three blocks of text that i've been badgering on about for the past Mm -hmm. god knows how long so if i was in your position now that's how i think i would start because it's different it's not what students are accustomed to writing I know mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if any of you have read anything like that, but I don't think so far I've come across any student approach it in in that way. And I feel like that is a very unique way of of mm-hmm. doing it. Yeah, definitely. I, it, it's it's so hard to start anything like that because again, where where do you start? Um, you know, I've seen students that have just to kind of give examples that I can think of. You know, I've seen students go. I did some work experience, maybe not worded like this, but I did some work experience doing this thing in the off chance that I might enjoy it. And now I know that this is the career that I want to pursue a passion in. And that it's quite a bold way of starting saying that you did the job first and this is why you want to study it. But if anything, that was like, okay, right. So you know exactly what you want to do. You've already done the work experience. You'll talk about that a little bit more later in the skills you develop from it. But this is where that passion came from. So sometimes it's just purely getting me on board with how passionate you are. And again, if that if that comes from your understanding of the course, as what Dallas just said, if it comes from you know something you've done in the past, um, anything like that can be a a hook but yeah definitely don't don't linger on that first if this is if this is your barrier to just starting that application and making that first draft don't let it be come back to it at the end and then figure out how you're going to structure this intro yeah i think some really really great great advice there um and we hope we've um given you some food for thought today on how to make a start of your personal statement um, again, it's not easy and not everyone is going to enjoy talking about themselves and writing about all their great skills and knowledge that they have. Um, so it's better to start sooner rather than later. So if you're applying to university for 2021, I think now is as good a time as any to start your personal statement if you haven't. Um, do make sure you pop it onto Word, save it, or even write it down, be old fashioned and write it down. I guess you can lose a piece of paper, but at least it can't crash like a computer mid-sentence. So perhaps go old school, you know, get your big piece of plain paper out, some different colored pens, and start putting down some ideas. Um, If you would like to join us for any further talks, we do have another one next week, next Wednesday, I believe it is. Um, And that one is on student life. Mm -hmm. Yep. Smiley, confident face in the background. That's good. Um, Again, same place for tuning in. And if you have missed our other talks, um, you can also view them um, at the same link as well. Um, For anybody who um, might be a bit more interested in the university and would like to um, attend one of our virtual open days, um, we do have one coming up. We have one in October. It is Saturday the 17th of October 
uh, really testing me now. Um, <laughs> so um, do, do sign up and you can get a plan of what will happen during the day. So you don't have to attend the whole day if you want to. You can pop in and out um, and find out, you know, what you're interested in, what you want to watch, what kind of questions you might have and where you can find out the answers. Anything else that I need to mention? Ben, Henrik, Sal? No, I, I think just use the time effectively, I guess. And on that note, thank you very much for joining us on this live stream. Have a very good rest of the evening. Take care and see you later. See you later.